Premier, Chief Justice, Senator, Executive Councillors, members of the Provincial Parliament, First Nations, distinguished guests, family and friends, mes chers amis. My dear friends, as I begin this remarkable journey, I want to thank each and every one of you for your support and encouragement and for sharing this very special day with me. I'm grateful to the Governor General and the Prime Minister for entrusting me with the responsibility of serving as the 29th Lieutenant Governor of Ontario. I will be sustained by their confidence and by the warm welcome of the Premier. I accept the charge of representing Her Majesty the Queen with humility and without hesitation. Canada's particular constitutional framework, our sovereign democracy, has allowed our system of governance to evolve in a peaceful and orderly manner. I have great respect and affection for the Queen, recognizing her dignity, strength, and commitment to duty. I pledge loyalty to the traditions of our collective heritage, to acting with impartiality and protecting the integrity of the Crown in Canada and in Ontario. I recognize that along with the constitutional functions of Lieutenant Governor come unique opportunities to celebrate the achievements, large and small, of the citizens of this province. We have such talented artists, scientists, business people and educators, among the best the world has to offer. We commemorate the sacrifices of our military and the dedication to duty of those who provide essential services in our communities. And we recognize and encourage a healthy spirit of volunteerism among young and old alike that makes our communities more humane and compassionate. These are our heroes. There's yet another role, however, that the Lieutenant Governor plays in our society. We encourage and support practical and tangible initiatives that enable all Ontarians to contribute meaningfully to the life of this province. Je profite l'occasion. I'd like to seize the opportunity that I have today to recognize and underline the generosity, spirit, and the spirit of work that um, I have seen in my predecessors. The opportunity to observe the impact of my predecessors firsthand. Thanks to the generosity of David Onley, I was provided a working space in the office at the desk of Ontario's first female Lieutenant Governor, Pauline McGibbon. Indeed, how could I not be inspired in preparing for my role sitting at that desk, surrounded by the art and artifacts of Ontario's viceregal history? The focus of Mrs. McGibbon and of her successor, Hilary Weston, on the rightful place of women and girls in society, and their recognition of the contribution of culture and the arts in enriching our quality of life are ever-present. And I have much to learn from Hal Jackman's deep interest in history and the events it behooves us to remember. I take inspiration from Lincoln Alexander's unique ability to bond with young people and to rally us all in the struggle against racism, and from Mr. Onley's profound understanding of what happens when people of all abilities are presented the opportunity to achieve their full potential. And as the Premier mentioned just this past week, I had the privilege of witnessing firsthand the cementing of lasting relationships with Aboriginal peoples relationships that were encouraged by the initiatives of Mr. Bartleman and Mr. Onley. We left KI with some important understandings into the challenges the community faces. We heard the knowledge of their elders, but we also saw and heard the hopes and dreams of Aboriginal youth as they walk in two worlds. The continuing reconciliation process is going to take our collective courage. I also want to recognize and applaud the universal motivations of citizenship expressed so well 
by all of our governors general. We are indeed a smart and caring nation. Be assured that I will continue to nurture the objectives that my predecessors held dear. And on this day of commencement, you deserve to know what I bring to this position, what has shaped my values and vision. As you may be able to tell from this ceremony, my nephews, Kyle and Cole, who accompanied me in the Landau, my niece, Lauren, who sang so beautifully, family comes first. In 1947, my mother and father had the courage to choose this country, emigrating from Northern Ireland to bring up their children in rural Saskatchewan. Those parents are here with me in spirit today. My parents placed a very high value on education, and although it was unspoken, we always knew that our path would be one of continuous learning and ambition. Being a child of the manse, the daughter of a teacher and musician, and the eldest of eight siblings, I learned the values of compassion, honesty, and respect. Je suis également très I am also very happy to have a family that is that includes a lot of friends. People who came here to see me today. Some of them came from very far, and I'm very happy to have their presence here today. Saskatchewan taught me the true value of strong community and nurtured a social consciousness and solidarity with those in less fortunate situations. It's the very DNA of the place. It encouraged visions as broad as the endless prairie sky. And as my journey took me beyond the protective and sheltered existence of small-town Saskatchewan life, I've been able to draw on a reservoir of strength, humour, common sense and risk-taking that was surely shaped by life on the prairies. But like many Ontarians, although I was born and raised elsewhere, I have chosen to make this province my home. I've also had the great good fortune to follow diverse paths of possibility on which I continue to learn and grow, seizing moments of opportunity thanks to an education that included the physical, behavioral and social sciences as well as the arts. From teaching through public service at the provincial, federal and international levels, and ultimately to the private sector, each chapter of my story has expanded my horizons and taught me valuable lessons. It is, however, not the time today to go into details um, regarding these experiences. It's no more noble profession than that of being a public servant. I'm very proud to call myself a public servant. In seeking to engage citizens actively in public policy matters that actually impact their lives, I came to know much about our country, listening to people in communities large and small, traveling the length and breadth of the country and into the high Arctic. And certainly my work with the United Nations influenced and shaped my worldview, because the challenging issues of our time require deep dialogue and systemic thinking. It was a real privilege to see my own country from a distance and to be reminded of how very fortunate we are with our wealth of natural resources, our relative stability, and our basic respect for one another as human beings in this country. That generosity of spirit, tolerance, and commitment to social justice must be nurtured. We generally think of peace as freedom from war, but we're not at peace if there isn't enough food to eat, if there's inadequate shelter, if people are sick and cannot get medical care, if they're impoverished and cannot hope to escape poverty's grip. In these terms, millions of our fellow humans on this planet cannot be said to be at peace. And so I believe my personal history will help me to serve you, to serve Ontarians during my term as Lieutenant Governor. 
Canada is approaching its 150th anniversary as a country. Undoubtedly, we will be motivated to reflect with pride on the important and central role that this province has played in the development of the nation. But perhaps we can dare to also think boldly about Ontario in the world. How can Ontarians contribute to and succeed in this changing and interconnected world? For Ontario has it all. This is a place and time of opportunity. From, from the sands of Point Pelee to the shores of Hudson Bay and beyond, Ontarians are blessed with an environment of unparalleled, spectacular diversity, rich with life and resources that have sustained generations. We're also home to millions of people from all walks of life and corners of the world, living and working in every kind of community from small and remote to large and urban. Thanks to clean air, bountiful water, and space to grow, our prospects for sustaining a flourishing society, culturally and economically, are the envy of the world. We're at the crossroads of migration, attracting an optimism, commitment, and dedication that inspire each generation to innovate, to build anew, and to enrich the fabric of Ontario society. Ontario's future, like its past, is anchored firmly in the world, and the world is in Ontario. Just look around us. One of our greatest strengths is the people that we have drawn from all around the globe. We are full of riches, but we also have some challenges. I want to draw your attention particularly to three of those. And they are not isolated challenges. They are, in fact, very interrelated. Our first challenge is to ensure responsible and inclusive prosperity so that everyone has a meaningful opportunity to participate. How do we harness a strong and healthy innovation ecosystem with world-leading knowledge institutions in order to fuel and secure economic vitality and productivity for all? How do we develop talented, diverse, and highly skilled workforces? How do we create, create opportunities for people, particularly youth, and create jobs that provide dignified work? To meet this challenge, we would be wise to engage more and more with the world. Learn about it, live in it, trade in it, work in it, and find new ways of deepening connections between Ontario and the world. The second and related challenge is the fragility of our planet. It is our mutual vulnerability. Our citizens understand that a healthy environment is simply the foundation for life on Earth. We are among the most scientifically literate people in the world. Do we have the imagination and determination to set ambitious goals, mobilize our talents, our energies, and our environmental resources in a shared vision of the future. And finally, there's a third challenge. As we protect our precious natural resources and develop economically, can we ensure social cohesion? All around us, we see growing conflict among different religious, ethnic, and national communities simply exploding into violence. Ontarians draw strength and encouragement from the fact that we have tried to construct a different kind of society, one that welcomes diversity, is interested in the traditions of others, and is based on fairness. But we cannot afford to become complacent. With changing demography, demographics, increasing poverty, homelessness, and mental health issues, we need to reach across divides, get to know each other better. For surely our goal must be to live with dignity in just and sustainable communities. We stand at an interesting moment in history. The world's most important problems are also Ontario's most, most fundamental challenges. Ontario and the world are really mirror images of one another. To succeed at home, we must contribute to the world. And to contribute to the world, we must succeed at home. 
each enables the other. I know that it has been traditional for the last number of years for incoming lieutenants governor, governors to declare during their investiture the themes that will be their priorities. I want to offer a slightly different approach. I want to start by listening. In the first months of my mandate, I will convene diverse groups of Ontarians to hear your ideas and insights about Ontario's place in the world. What can we contribute? What can we learn from each other to meet the global and local challenges that we face in common? The challenges of achieving prosperity, protecting our natural heritage, and building inclusive societies. The aim will be to provide a forum for, for, for reflection and become a crucible for ideas. And in time from those stimulating conversations, a few priority themes will emerge. Ladies and gentlemen, to achieve an Ontario that works for everyone will require uncommon dedication, creativity, and energy. I invite Ontarians to join me in this exciting, challenging journey into our shared future. Thank you. Merci. Thank you.